Thank you for downloading Sky for Business Monitoring Tool. This is a, a video on how to make use of it. So firstly, we'll go and fire off the monitoring tool as part of the install. And you will notice the install directory being populated with all the install files. There are four files contained in the install directory. The first is the core exe that runs all the, the backend bits. Settings file is where it gets the settings from. The readme file is a bit of a history file that has a version history, some description, a few limitations, um, and even some access to some guides, how to get hold of me, and some versioning data, as well as the uh, event identities used to determine whether tests are successful or failed and that sort of thing. There's, of course, the monitoring report app as well. That takes care of delivering and building reports. Getting back to the monitoring tool, to get started, we'll fire that up, and you will see the uh, initial homepage or the first tab. What we'll be doing is populating the Skype admin data with the front end to run PowerShell commands against, plus the target front end and edge pools. So you can test against multiple from different locations. Also, we have test user one and two different test users. They need to be enabled for the modalities we'll be testing. So for example, if you're trying to test conferencing, the user must have conferencing enabled. If you're going to be testing target PSTN number, remember that it may generate a charge. And so uh, you may have to negotiate something with your telco. We'd commit settings once populating all of that. Of course, I have pre-populated a settings file myself, and I'll just drag that over to the directory. Now you may want to back up your settings file for that very reason, because I'm lazy that way. Firing up the Skype monitor tool again after the settings file has been replaced. Right, okay, so now we have all our data loaded and we are ready to log in. Now when you log in, just keep in mind that uh, this tool can be run on the front end or remotely via PowerShell remoting, and so it just needs access to be able to do that. I'm local, so it says already connected. Now I can move on to synthetic transactions. Over here I can cherry pick which transactions I'd like to run in my testing regime. Of course, if you select all of them, the testing cycle may take a bit longer. Just keep in mind that whatever tests you nominate need to be valid for the test users. So this my user doesn't have voicemail, so I won't test voicemail. Also, I don't have persistent chat, so I'll skip that. I don't have enterprise voice for this particular test. The conferencing services I consider as non-core, um, they take a little bit longer to do. So the audio video conference and the dial-in conference have specific requirements and do take up to a minute, sometimes more, to uh, complete. I'm going to leave them out of my little example at the moment. And my federation is actually not uh, completely set up correct. Um, it's for the demonstration purposes. I'm going to run some tests against the ones I've selected for now. We'll come back and demonstrate a failure with the federation service. Jumping into the event viewer, you'll see an entry there in the application and services log under UC sorted that pretty much logs everything that is going on. Just moving on to the scheduling and reporting, the domain account and password over there is required for running the schedule, the schedule tasks. The test frequency over here for the synthetic transactions are really for my uh, testing frequency. And then this box over here is for the report frequency on like a daily report at six and a weekly report at five past eight on a Monday morning. This is the send report to and the subject name for the actual reports. I like to put the domain name in that I'm testing or the SIP domain, especially if you're monitoring multiple environments, it makes it nice and easy to keep track. This email report details here is the sender address for both the reports and the alert emails. Difference between report and alert. Alert is when something fails. Report is just a daily or a weekly report. That's my SMTP server I'm sending through. So my account is actually an Office 365 mail account. And there's my alert email. And of course, the alert email and the report emails can be different. If you want to add multiple emails, you can separate them with commas. There's my email reports. Enable that if I want that send. And if I want alerts when tests fail, I check that box over there. We can test emails by clicking on that button over there, just to be sure that we have the correct SMTP server and port credentials and so on. Commit settings will save all the details in the background. It'll also set up the scheduled tasks. So if I go back to my scheduled task viewer, wait, let's first uh, have a look at 
the uh, event ID saying it's been done and then to the schedule task. There we are. So having a look at the schedule tasks, you'll see there are three new ones there. The first being the synthetic transactions and the frequency at which they run, which is 10 minutes according to the application. And then there is my daily and weekly report intervals. So there's my daily. I might just change this to seven. Uh, no, wait, seven. Let's make it 7.45 for my daily report 7:45 a.m. and perhaps my weekly report I'll run at 4:45 no. ah 4:55 is good on a friday now once i commit this i can jump back into my task scheduler in the background just to be sure that it's updated refresh there you go very good so daily weekly updated and off we go now just to be sure that it's uh, scheduled reports are actually working properly I'm just going to go and right click and run evidence of it running would be in my event log so you'll see there it says our oh, auto run starting already connected and synthetic transactions will then follow there they are within the body of this event you can also see uh, more details about what test is actually being done and um, some details about troubleshooting if, if there is any issues. Running the monitoring report app is also basically toggled from the task scheduler. So what I might do is I'll run a daily. You'll see there's an HTML file generated on the left. Keep your eye on that as I run this task. There you go, just generated. And now that will then be emailed as the body of an, an email as the daily report. Now, you'll see there's only four four tests in there. I'll just go back and look at my config. Oh, I've got all the checkboxes checked there for probably about seven or eight. So there you go. Just a quick refresh. I might have opened that report up before it was ready to go. If you want to add or remove, just check the boxes and it'll add them to the report because it also controls what's being tested. So that's my daily report. There's all, these are all successes, so what does a failure look like? Let's fire up the monitoring tool again, see if we can enable a test that'll fail, just to show you what's going on when there is a failure. Remember, I still have my alert email checkbox checked. Whoops, another instance running. Hang on. Uh, oh, yep, I'll probably have a task running for that. Can only run the application at one instance at a time, and there you go. It's running. Right. So, there you go. Oh, that must have just stopped then. Right. Very good. Get to our scheduling reports, synthetic transfer. Let's, let's enable Federation. I know Federation, as I said before, isn't properly configured. So, we'll commit that and then run some tests just to see what happens. This is the manual. And then we'll just close this and let it run automatically in the future. Right. Let's run that test. Now, some of the tests, like the Federation test, will give you quite a bit of time before it actually goes fail. And the application may report in the application form header. It may actually say that it's um, not responding. It gets through anyway. So let's go and have a look at my daily report. I'll run it again. You'll see the daily report in the back end there being replaced. And there it is. Open it up. And there's my failure federation. For those with the astute eye, you might have, might have noticed an alert htm file that also landed up in the back that is what's emailed to me as the body of any failed alerts so pretty handy to know where that's all stored and what's going on just having a quick look at the emails that are coming through this is kind of what they look like as they're arriving as the body there's my failed federation test i've done a few of them and then here's my alert email saying that that test failed here's the message and that's the time Keep in mind that this is synthetic transactions we're using to test here. And if there are any services that have stopped or any contention with anything timing out or that sort of thing, we're actually running these tests in the background synthetically. And so they're a pretty good way to determine whether there were any issues in the background. Thank you for watching. I hope that uh, you find this tool useful. And if you have any suggestions or recommendations, please reach out to me. My contact details are in the readme file. Thank you very much and have a good day.